Income tax 2021-2022. Gifts to charity, part number three. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found on Schedule A Instructions Tax Year 2021 on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're in the income tax formula focused in on the itemized deductions, keeping them distinct in our mind from the adjustments to income or the above the line deductions, Schedule 1 deductions, or the deductions for adjusted gross income, noting that itemized deductions need to be greater than the standard deduction in order to benefit from them. Page 1 of the Form 1040, looking at line 12A, standard deduction or itemized deduction. This is the Schedule A itemized deductions categories listed on the left-hand side, only taking the itemized deductions if greater than the standard deductions, which would be taken back here, page 1 on the Form 1040. Noting we're looking at the itemized deduction of charitable contributions and that we usually think about them as an itemized category and have more capacity to get a bigger deduction there if we are itemizing. However, if we're not itemizing, we might be able to take some of charitable contributions here on page one of the form 1040. If we are itemizing on Schedule A, then we would take the deduction on Schedule A and typically have a larger threshold for which we can take a deduction. Schedule A itemized deductions for charitable contributions is where we're looking at here. Remember to keep in mind the standard deduction capacity to help determine whether or not it would be beneficial to itemize or not. And if someone is not at capacity, then they might not get the full benefit of the charitable contributions and might get the benefit on the first page of the form 1040 as opposed to itemized deductions on Schedule A, which is the deduction we're focused on here. So amounts you can't deduct. So now we're looking at those items which are saying, hey, could I put, could I, if I gave this money out or this amount out, then would I be able to deduct it? This is in the no category. So certain contributions to charitable organizations to the extent that you receive a state or local tax credit in return for your contribution. So if you get a tax credit in return for the contribution, then you've already got a benefit from it. And if you were to get a deduction from it as well, that would be kind of like the double dipping thing, getting two benefits from the one thing again, which you can't typically do. You can see publication 526 for more details and exceptions to that rule. An amount paid to or for the benefit of a college or university in exchange for the right to purchase tickets to an athletic event in the college or university stadium. So you can imagine all kind of situations where people are, are trying to categorize something as a charitable contribution, but they're really getting a benefit from it. And typically, if that was the case, then it doesn't look like it's a charitable contribution. It looks like it's an exchange, uh, a market exchange, and you don't get a benefit for a market exchange. So, for example, obviously, if you give money to a university and it's out of the goodness of your heart, then it might be a charitable contribution to the university. But... If you're requiring them to build a statue in your in your in your likeness or something like that, then it might not be as charitable. Or if you're getting obviously season tickets to to the games or something like that, you would think that looks more like an exchange as well. Other times when people try to do this, you can imagine a situation if if you had the money to do this, you might try to give money to a charitable organization, but somehow maintain the rights to have a very specific range of things that you want them to put the money in, or you still have control over how they spend the money to a very specific degree. Again, that would kind of seem like you didn't really give the money away at that point in time. So that's where it gets a little, little weird. So for most people, that's not the case. Obviously, if you give money to a charitable organization, you, you're not given enough money that you have weight over you know so much of what they do with it and you might not be getting something like an exchange for that travel expenses including meals and lodging while away from home performing donated services unless there was no significant element of personal pleasure recreation or vacation in the travel so poss possibly you have the travel expenses but again it's just like what you would see with a business travel kind of situation or medical travel kind of situation if for example you're traveling and you're going to the Bahamas and it looks a whole lot like a vacation, but you're doing some kind of donation thing at the same time, you would think you don't get to deduct the trip to the Bahamas, especially those, you can't deduct those drinks like in the coconuts. 
be as part, at least that you would think wouldn't be deducted. So political contributions. So we don't want to have the charitable contributions uh, be a way to influence the political system. And obviously, again, you could see where that's going to be the, some of the big problems on the higher income side of things, where people, when they give a charitable contribution, they it looks a lot like they're not actually giving a contribution, they're buying influence. And we don't want that. We don't want to get a benefit for people buying uh, influence because that seems kind of like an exchange and not a very you know good one to set a precedent for or you know get a deduction for or try to incentivize. Dues, fees, or bills paid to uh, country clubs, lodges, fraternal orders, or similar groups. So if you're giving money to a country club or something like that, where you know it seems like dues to a country club and not for the use and so on to be part of the club and not as a as a as a charitable contribution out of the kindness and goodness of your heart then you would think you wouldn't be incentivizing a deduction like that cost of raffle bingo or lottery tickets so the gambling kind of of thing which is something that you might see uh done to to generate revenue for a, for you know for a good purpose or something like that but the actual, you know, kind of gambling process itself is something that you would think that they wouldn't want to be incentivizing as a deductible item. But you may be able to deduct these expenses on line 16. So you can take a look at line 16 later for more inf information on the gambling losses. So, so if you can't get the deduction for uh, the contributions here, which are the charitable contributions, you might say, well, can I get a deduction possibly for gambling losses? And, and usually the rules there we, would be that it would have to be greater than the gambling. Uh, you'd have to have losses that, I'm sorry, losses, you would have to have gambling winnings to match up the gambling losses to generally. So we might touch on that a little bit more in a future uh, presentation. Value of your time or services, uh, value of blood given to a blood bank. So, <laughs> So if you gave blood to the blood bank, you can't you can't deduct the value of blood. But they literally took my blood. It's my blood. They sh I should get a deduct. Whatever. No, can't get a deduct. The transfer of future interest in tangible personal property. Generally, no deduction is allowed until the entire interest has been transferred. Uh, so, if you transfer, you know, the the property, or say I will transfer the property in the future. Well, you haven't transferred the property and we're kind of on like a cash flow basis or a basis where the transaction typically has to take place in the year that you're getting the deduction generally. Also, just realize that the value of your time or services, that usually applies when you're talking about especially like non, uh, non-professional services. So if you go somewhere and you say, I'm, I'm going to serve meals, I'm going to dish up the soup, I'm going to you know, do, do that kind of stuff then that's considered like non-professional services. You don't generally get to deduct uh, your time in that instance. Gifts to individuals and groups that are operated for personal profit. Uh, gifts to foreign organizations. However, you may be able to deduct gifts to certain U.S. organizations that transfer funds to foreign charities and certain Canadian, Israeli, and Mexican charities. So you can see publications there. So in other words, you can't really give to foreign entities because they're not under the organizational structure as a U.S. you know not-for-profit organization, but then you might say, well, that's I want to give to some benefit program that helps out what I want to help out, which is in some other area that needs help. Well, then you might be able to give to organizations which then have that purpose, right? They're a U.S. organization which then has the purpose of helping out in some way, possibly by transferring then money to other organizations or possibly by getting in, getting their hands in to some of these other areas themselves. So you can see publication 526 for more details there. Gifts to organizations engaged in certain political activities that are uh, of direct financial interest to your trade or business. So if it's a direct financial interest, doesn't look like a, the kindness of your heart expanding and just flowing money out to other people. Gifts to groups whose purpose is the lobby for changes to the laws. So this is that same kind of thing with the political contributions. We don't want to incentivize people, you know, to to be using their money in exchange for political contributions, which kind of gets into the area of seems like kind of like bribes or something like that. Or, you know, lobbying gets kind of kind of fuzzy area in terms of <laughs> that. So we don't really want to incentivize and get of a deduction for people spending their money to buy political influence generally. So gifts to civic leagues. 
as social and sports clubs, labor unions, and chamber of commerce value of benefits received in connection with a contribution to a charitable organization. So you can see publication 526 for exceptions there. Cost of tuition, however, you may be able to take an educational credit. So that we saw that before, basically, if you're saying I'm giving money to the university and they just gave then me classes that I can take for credit at the university. Well, that's called buying, you know, your education. That's that's not a that's not a deduction. You didn't do that. But you might be able to get a deduction there if you pay for education by possibly taking the lifetime learning credit or, or sort of hope credit or something like that. So we'll get into the credits later so that's where you probably get the better benefit there anyways because that'll be a credit as opposed to the deduction a uh, gift by cash or check enter on line 11 the total value of gifts you made in cash or by check including out-of-pocket gifts unless a limit deduction gifts applies to you for more information about the limit on deducting gifts see limit on the amount you can deduct earlier so in other words you're going to put your basically straightforward cash or check uh, amounts here unless you hit that AGI limit phase out in which case then you have to deal with the AGI phase out you might have to uh, carry some of the uh, to some of the amount forward into future periods so if your deduction is limited you may have to carry over to next year see publication 526 for more information usually most people don't have that problem because if you're itemizing your income is usually fairly substantial so that means that you could you know, put a fair amount in before hitting the caps to, to limit you to how much you can itemize because your AGI or adjusted gross income or income is fairly high. But deduct, so we got uh, gifts of cash or check deduction for gifts by cash or check limit. If your deduction for the gifts you made in cash or by check is limited, you can see publication 526 to figure the amount you can deduct only enter on line 11 the deductible value of gifts you made in cash or by check. Uh, record keeping. For any contributions made in cash, regardless of the amount, you must maintain as a record of the contribution a bank record such as a canceled check or credit card statement or a written record from the charity. So typically you're probably going to have both these days because notice when you make a, a deductible kind of uh, kind of payment, whether it be this kind of payment or any kind of deductible payment, you typically don't want to make it by cash. You want to make it with a check or you want to make it with a credit card or you want to make it with an electronic transfer because that gives you the audit trail automatically. So then you can look up that information, find it a lot more easily than just paying someone cash. And you also will, would like to get the statement from the organization itself so that so that you have the the backup and support for the payment in that way as well remember the the government doesn't usually like cash right the reason they're kind of moving to they're trying to they're trying to get away from cash is basically because there's no audit trail with cash so so you could say so but when we're taking the deduction that's, of course, when you really want the audit trail, right? The, the, they're worried about the audit trail with regards to the income side item of things because they want to make sure people are reporting the, the income side of things. So, so in any case, you want to have the audit trail so that it'll be easy if in the event that they come back for an audit, you can show them. And if you have an electronic transfer of some kind, credit card, or electronic transfer much easier. The written record must include the name of the of the charity, date, and amount of the contribution. If you made contributions through payroll deduction, see publication 526 for information on the records you must keep. Don't attach the record uh, to your tax return. Instead, keep it with you for other records. So you don't give that information, of course, to the IRS. Don't feel like you gotta list out all your deductions and kind of kind of staple it onto the return. Or something or attach it to your electronic return it's just there in the event that they audit you that you can pull it out and they could audit you statute of limitations is three years it could be longer than that so make sure you got the documentation settled up so if you looked at it three years later then it's still good so your contributions of 250 or more you must also have a contemporaneous written acknowledgement from the charitable organization see gifts of 250 dollars or more earlier uh, you will still need to keep a record of when you made the cash contributions if the contemporaneous written acknowledgement doesn't include that information.